first and foremost, congratulations to you on your win from last night. Thank you so much, Ashley. We are really proud of the grassroots uh, army and coalition that we built and, and so humbled by all the support we've gotten from across the state. You know, it was a really close race, still a close race as these results coming in, about 52 to 48 percent. What do you think put you over the top uh, against State Senator Royce? Just all of the, you know, we drove tens of thousands of miles across the state, went everywhere, went to every corner of the state, um, met with uh, just tens of thousands of voters and, and community leaders. And I think that building those relationships over the year before COVID um, we're not only critical in the primary, but are going to be critical in the general as we not only, um, you know, talking to regular everyday Texans and, and building my policy platform on the solutions to the challenges that most of us may, you know, face. Um, that's the difference between me and Cornyn is that he's so kind of out of touch with regular Texans. So I think that um, not only the impact it had on building my policy positions and, and uh, my ideas and, and other Texans ideas for solutions, but also those relationships and, and showing people that they have an opportunity to have a senator that cares enough to come to their community and, and, and uh, talk to them, you know, in person about that stuff. It's, it's really critical. Yeah. When we look at the attacks that are coming against you, obviously, Senator John Cornyn wasting no time launching some of those attacks, even uh, heading just to, uh, into this runoff election. Some of his criticisms are the same criticisms from some of the people in the Democratic Party who say, you know, you had the backing of Washington. Uh, you have some big names, big attention. They're trying to meddle in Texas elections. What do you say to that type of criticism? I think that the person who shouldn't be meddling in a Democratic primary is a Republican incumbent and that it's a really big red flag that he knows that he's in a lot of trouble. I don't know that in his, you know, nearly four decades in politics that he's ever had to uh, meddle and actually spend money in a primary trying to, you know, stop himself from having to face me in the general. Um, so, you know, I I'm really proud. We we've raised millions of dollars with an average online donation of only $23. Um, and we've got donations and support. Um, well, we have donations from over three quarters of the counties, but as you saw from the electoral map, we have support from nearly every county. Um, and you know, that's going to be difficult for him to overcome in the general. And he knows it. Um, he's kind of off the rails. He's all over the place. I'm too far right. I'm too far left. And he can't like decide on how to attack me. So he's kind of throwing the bowl of spaghetti at the wall to see what's going to stick. Um, and I think he's going to be disappointed. You brought up the issue of money, and so I do want to talk about that. His war chest quite sizable. Some people see mm -hmm. this as a little bit of disadvantage for the Democrat because you guys had to go into a runoff election. You have not been able to save up and fundraise all of your money to say that you are the nominee. Now that you are the nominee, what are you going to be doing to try to catch it? Or do you I think the value of being battle tested and having to really um dig in deep and and be very thorough on your policy positions is um an advantage for us he's never had a rough race um he shows it now it seems a lot of the the, the moves that he and his team are making are very kind of amateurish things that you would see from a first or second um, time candidate. And so um, I'm actually really excited about meeting him in a debate, uh, getting some thorough answers to, to some of the disinformation that he's been spreading. Um, and, you know, I think that uh, as Texans learn more and more about him and I, because he doesn't have a very high name ID for a three term senator, especially um, as Texans learn more about both of us, they're going to see that they have an opportunity to vote for somebody who's more like them. Um, and this November, we're going to vote out anybody, any politician that is more DC than Texas. And I can't think of anyone that that applies to more than John Cornyn. Do you think you'll be able to catch up fundraising wise? Yeah, you know, he's got some really rich, powerful people with a very profit driven reason to keep him in office. Um, he legislates in a way that maximizes the profit margins for the um, private detention centers and the gun lobby and big pharma. So there's no doubt we, we're facing some big guns. But when enough of us Texans stand together, and say enough is enough and um you know pitch in five bucks uh you know like i said our average donation is 23 bucks and we've still raised nearly seven million dollars that way um i'm confident you know texans texans have a very sensitive bs meter um and texans uh can abide a lot from their representatives one thing that they cannot abide is spinelessness and bootlicking those qualities are not something we associate with texas um and i believe that we will have our voices heard in november you know, when we're looking at the polls in the presidential race, you have some polls that show former Vice President Joe Biden 
actually leading against President Donald Trump in the state of Texas. Some people now really starting to see Texas as a battleground state. How does that give you an advantage? You know, I think that um, we're going to benefit from that and that uh, Vice President Biden's team has benefited from our work for the, from the last year and a half. Um, Vice President Biden is very popular with the military. Um, he, in, in contrast to this administration, and I include John Cornyn in that statement, um, is, has a lot of support for the military. We in the military know that he's not going to deploy troops lightly. His son, uh, served in the military and died. A lot of people feel from Gulf War syndrome. Um, you know, we we know that he is uh, he takes very seriously the deployment of military troops. We know that he isn't going to rob our construction budget to build some um, you know monument to his ego. Um, so you know, I, I have high hopes that we're going to deliver 38 electoral votes for Vice President Biden because we're going to be running a solidly coordinated campaign. Um, one of the things I learned in the military is that you can't accomplish a mission by yourself. Uh, so we're very excited about uh, building a team that's going to deliver good results and good servant leaders who are actually going to work for regular working Texans instead of big, powerful special interests. You know, even though despite kind of this momentum that the Democratic Party has right now in Texas, the Cornyn seat is still <laughs> listed as likely red when we look at some of the polling. Uh, do, does that discourage you at all? Well, he just moved to lean red, um, so that encourages me. Um, and that happened earlier than what we expected. And we've already started tightening up the race, and it's it's still three and a half months out. Um, so I would say we're ahead of schedule, and we are on track to beat him in November. All right. Any final thoughts for our viewers? Yeah, you know, um, we've been a low voter turnout state for so long. And because of that, um, our representatives do not reflect our values. Most Texans don't want voter suppression. They want vote by mail. They don't want gerrymandering. They don't want corporate money in politics. This election is our moment to define who we are and to send that message to our allies and enemies around the world. And this is our only moment. It's our last chance to maintain the mantle of the leaders of the free world. And we have the chance to change the direction of our entire country from right here in Texas. We're going to flip the Senate and get Mitch McConnell's legislative graveyard to open up and start working for regular people again. And we are going to turn the White House from here in Texas. And frankly, that's exactly how it should be because we're Texas, so. All right, Mrs. Hagar, we look forward to talking with you again in the future. Thanks, Ashley, talk to you soon.